You are now about to witness the strength of street knowledge. Let's discover hard couple months, but it's in this this enough for you to know what's up in the hood. I was about 11 years old when I found out. She almost set the house on fire. Majority of my childhood, I really didn't have a lot of time to spend with her. It was like she was there, but she wasn't. Just left me there. When I found out when my mother was on drugs, I mean, I knew, but I was too little to understand, really. But as I got up into age, I kind of figured out what it was and kind of figured out why she wasn't around, why she wasn't spending time with me. It affected my relationship with my mother by not letting, not letting me have a lot of time to spend with her. For the majority of my childhood, I really didn't have a lot of time to spend with her. I spent time with her, but not like how I wanted to, you know, like a father, like a mother son relationship should be, it wasn't like that. It was this one time where I got in trouble in school. It was on a Thursday and Friday, on, on, usually every Friday we would go to Markham Roller Skate Ring. So I got in trouble that Thursday so I couldn't go anywhere Friday. So I thought she was in the bed asleep. So I snuck out the kitchen window and went up to the church because that's where the bus pick you up at the church and it takes you to Markham Roller Skate Ring. Snuck out and went to the roller skate rink. Had a time of my life. Got back home and that was the worst time of my life. Yeah. She was high. My parents don't know, but my mom knows. Like, she caught me doing it and she's really upset about it. And now she thinks I'm a bad kid for it. But I've been taking marijuana since I was in sixth grade, so. She hasn't known, but she recently found out. So she's starting to think I'm a bad kid, but I'm not. I believe my mama stole from the house, um, stole money. Um, she would stay away from days at a time. I don't know what she was doing at that particular time, but she would stay away quite a time um, to keep up her habit. I think I started doing it because I was just, you know, depressed. Who wants to see their, you know, their parents? No, on drugs. They always work. My yes, my dad was an alcoholic. Yes, he's been a cokehead, but he's still an idol and he still could be something. My mom, she's a nurse. There's, I don't never blame my parents. They never noticed. People looked at me like, man, this dude is a drug head. He likes doing drugs when I really wasn't. I just like smoking weed back then. The drug I took was five grams of premature mushrooms and I ate it in a peanut butter sandwich and it was a horrible night because I ran away from my home that night. I went to my friend's house and I was going to crash there. Then uh, his mom said I couldn't sleep there so right when the mushrooms started kicking in they kicked me out the house and uh, I tried like walking around trying to find my way home but I couldn't read for anything like to save my life. I came across a bar where this guy, he was really drunk. I asked him, how do I get home? So he already had a cab and he's like, here man, just take it. He gave the taxi driver $20 and he was like, can you make sure he gets home fine? Sure. And I got home. I went in the bathroom to smoke because my brother smoked, so I would have just blamed it on them. And my mom found out, so she got all angry and she started yelling and I thought it was supposed to make you happy, but at that moment, it just made me mad and more angry and made me think of a whole bunch of stuff. So I got mad at my mom. I took pills. I tried to kill myself. I prayed not to wake up. I got into an altercation with one of my closest friends. We couldn't get a weed connect, and it took us about two and a half hours to find one, and we still didn't find one, so we said, screw it. And we was going home, and on my way home, he kept on pissing me off about how we could have gotten it from this place and that place, and I'm an idiot, I'm stupid, I should have listened to him. And he, he kept wanting to fight me in the middle of the street for it. He kept pushing me, 
And I told him, leave it alone. It's just a bag of weed. And then he took me to the edge, so I told him, he said, you want to fight? Then come with me to my crib. I got, I got something for you. Went in my house, grabbed a knife, and I tried to kill him. Time, I was, I was at the park, just chilling. Chilling with like a whole bunch of homeboys from the hood or whatever you want to call it. And they gave me something. They said that it was weed. It wasn't weed. I don't know what it was, but I remember waking up to a man, and I don't, I don't know who this man was, and he looked 40 years old. I think that we need to teach our children um, because times have, have changed from back in the 80s. I didn't know what drugs were until I got older. And I think now the children, they know so much. It's like right there. You can get it from anybody. When I grow up, I want my kids seeing me not being uh, I want them to know that I'm going to be there for them. And I ain't going to go nowhere. Just do you. Do what makes what you like to do. Like play video games if you want, smoke or thinking about or go outside and play sports with your friends. Just, you don't have to smoke to fit in or whatever. You just do you. Hip hop really helps the community because I mean like, it helps people mellow down. Like, my list of music can help Rest in peace to my girl Jimmy. Beef we don't want any. That ain't even why God sent me. Too many thugs giving us loves. Whatever happened to giving out hoods? Shooting and banging on the dust. Got too tough to show my love. Not too tough to eat my girl. Giving praise to the one above instead of faking all these drugs. Fake faking all these drugs. I ain't a banger, no a drug dealer. Might walk away, but I ain't a punk neither. Back against the wall, you ain't gotta squeeze the trigger. Kids selling drugs for a bigger figure. That's not how the world should go. Whatever happened to let it grow. Whatever happened to be a mole. Learning, planning, taking it slow. Day by day, so many kids is fading away. What more can I say? Something gotta change. I mean, it's been like this for, for 20, 30 years, so. You can't, can't just change overnight, so people got to do what they got to do to help do it. If a for their family or people got to do what they got to do to help not do that. It's all on them. Living in this community, you got a 50-50 chance to, to be good or be bad. It's just the way you take it. We need programs such as this alternative. We need men to be with our young men and to work with them and show them other things. Here at Alternatives, we offer a bunch of different programs. Um, some of the programs are arts programs, hip hop arts, break dancing, mural arts, um, music production. We also have employment programs, helping young people find jobs and work on their job skills. We have girl world programming specifically for young women um, to work together and become leaders in their community. Um, we also have restorative justice programs, which help schools um, work with youth to find alternatives to suspension and things like that and uh, work on peer juries. Alternatives is like a, a positive recreational center where people come and you do what you do, like break in, uh, DJ in, and also if you're here, you're not outside doing crowds. So that's how alternatives help everyone out. Yeah. I, I think definitely a lot of communities could use a space like alternative because, you know, a lot of times, you know, Things because they don't have anywhere to go, they don't have 
a place that allows to express themselves openly and freely. I mean, giving people, giving people an alternative is, is the right start, man. You know, people, people come out and play basketball, put down and up, break dancing, writing rhymes, whatever it is, man. There's, there's one more thing to keep them on, you know, off of drugs, out of gangs, off the streets, and that kind of thing. So, I mean, I think this is a good, good effort and a good way to kind of hit things, you know, where they start out. At this point, you can still get to people when they before they, they you know get in that cycle because it's so self-perpetuating. You know, you just continue and continue until somebody breaks it. I think a place like Alternative definitely can uh, help prevent drugs and violence. It helps you find more about yourself and helps you become have friends so you can stay away from the drugs and alcohol and you can always depend on your friends here. Everyone here is like a family. I mean, you can do different things here. You don't have to do one thing. Like, you can either learn to break dance, or you can learn to do graffiti. You can learn to, to DJ. You can sample music. Yeah, when you're too busy training for break dancing, alcohol and drugs just doesn't fit into the picture. You gotta train. You gotta eat healthy. It's, what a lot of people don't realize about break dancing is like two thirds of it is not break dancing. Two thirds of it is conditioning and exercises. So when you're spending all your time and energy doing that. Alcohol and drugs defeat the purpose. You can get so involved where you don't even have time to think about stuff like this. I think alternative does what it can to um, delay the onset of drugs and alcohol. I don't think we are quite getting to the point where we're preventing it because it's happening right outside our doors. So I don't think we're really doing much to prevent it, but delaying it with the youth that we're working with, I think we're doing that. I've seen young people go in here and I see them come out. And I see the young people have something other to do than hang the streets. Yes, I think programs like this do a lot for our young people. Uh, I'm a breaker and uh, honestly I practice so much and I have so many things going on that I can't afford to have drugs in my life. We need to get back together and adults have to take back their children. The city don't need to take our children. We as adults need to take our children back. And in places like Alternative, and they have people that take the children back and take, teach them something other than selling drugs. We have to change this moment. And the only way we're going to do this is teach our children that there's something other than selling drugs. When they see the video, it's going to give them like a perspective of what I'm thinking about. Damn. Uptown way before Holly Grove. This is acapella just to let you know. We polar bears from the North Pole. Like icebergs, too cold, would never melt. I done lost my health, but with the Lord I done gained my breath. Whew, some stuff, some stuff, some stuff. You gotta, don't watch me watch TV. Don't do drugs, that's real talk, and go stay in school. Good day, Chicago. This is Hardcover News. I'm Kiaria Phillips. And I'm Zayan Moore. Today, we will be discussing the war on drugs. The war on drugs was declared in 1971 by President Nixon. Some believe the drug war reinforces institutional racism by targeting minorities. Teens are greatly impacted by the war on drugs. There are zero tolerance policies that cater to the school to prison pipeline. In 2010, 5,500 arrests were made on CPS students under the age of 18. 75.5 are African Americans, but they only make up 42% of CPS students. Now we'll be taking it to the streets to see how other people feel war about this. War on drugs is a war on the citizens of this country. Um, in my opinion, um, all nonviolent crime should be decriminal decriminalized. They're very uh, misguided 
you know, we see a lot of youth and a lot of people of color incarcerated for, you know, life sentences even. Lot, lot, lots of time for really like petty drug crimes. Yeah. A war on drugs makes as much sense as a war on McDonald's. Because there's always going to be a McDonald's. There's always going to be a McDonald's restaurant on every side of the corner. Just like there's always going to be a drug dealer on every side of the corner. If programs were implemented to maybe get youth off of the streets, it would be a lot easier. Rather than enforcing on the, on the problems, they need to enforce on the solutions. Mm -hmm. And, oh, and I, I believe a lot of the problems, especially with our young people today, is that they don't have enough positive enough positive reinforcement to steer away from the drugs. That's a funny term, at-risk youth, because I think as long as we provide youth with positive opportunities to do things and to grow and to keep them motivated, they're not as at-risk. I feel like if they don't have a role model or a mentor, it's easy for them to go astray. In the lure of the streets, they can make money, and um, that's easier than going to school. I think a lot of money is spent in the prison, prison system, um, keeping adults there, feeding them three meals a day. Um, and then I think there's a lot of businesses that make money off of the people <laughs> that are running the prisons. Restorative justice. Uh, I'm a big fan of this. And I think when we let kids be part of the decision makers in the school, it makes a huge difference in how they feel about themselves. They feel like they have a voice and they can be part of the they can be part of the solution if it's always the adults that are in charge and they're telling the kids what to do sit down be quiet do this do this um, then it kind of creates this prison mentality a little bit because that's what happens in prison i do think that when students or adults are looking for ways to escape i think that if we provide positive ways for uh, that escape, if you will, then it'll be more productive for the school and society and everybody in whole. The jury system is a problem. Um, the juries are very often kind of keyed against minorities. Um, I would have more judges trying cases by themselves rather than juries. And then also there are minimum guidelines for sentencing for drug offenders and those should definitely be revised even beyond what they've already been revised. Um, and how would you deal with the youth uh, that, that get caught with drugs or get somehow involved with the law? Definitely not prison. They should be going to rehab programs, um, programs that encourage them to you know, get back into school, find jobs, not going to prison for kind of petty offenses. Um, how would you solve these problems? Oh, by getting a new criminal justice system, but I mean that's obviously a big thing. You can't really just do that overnight. Um, I think we have to start by acknowledging the racial disparities um, and talking about why so many people of color are getting put behind bars for, you know, possession of drugs when you see a lot of white youth just kind of walking away. And it's why we know because they can afford better lawyers. And why is the justice system catered towards people with money? We should a stop this war on drugs. And B, I don't mind saying this, we should legalize all drugs. The reason being that I say we should legalize all drugs and tax them is because we have been in a national deficit for I don't know how many years. I think it's like 100 or 200, but we've been in a national deficit. And if all drugs were taxed, we go wipe by the national debt and just like that. The judicial system is very messed up because we got more, we got more drug dealers in the penal system and not more rapists and not more child molesters. That will be all today for Hardcover News. Thank you. Thank you to everyone that participated and gave your opinions. It does because the after effects on it is what it can do to the body. A lot of people can't recuperate after it. And sometimes certain people, once they take a hit, they want another one and they can't recuperate or function afterwards. One of the negative of drugs and violence is that you, it, it affects your system. You, kill, you can kill yourself by using drugs. You can't get a good job by using drugs. And 
Like you can get fired from your job by using drugs. Well, drugs ca cause violence. If we never heard about drugs or anything, people wouldn't pay, pay attention to drugs because if we never knew about clothes, we wouldn't be wearing them, so we wouldn't know the difference about drugs or not. Because when you use drugs, it affects your brain and make you want to do crazy stuff that you wouldn't regularly do if you weren't on drugs. Drugs do actually play a critical role in society because um, it basically influences most of the violence and um, the, just basically the things that we do, it, it like strives life. Uh, I think it'll be a, um, a kind of sort of better world because everybody wouldn't be, it wouldn't be no crackheads on the street and all that other stuff. To me, ain't no positive thing about what drugs can do to you or what drugs is. Well, basically, I'm against drugs and violence because drugs take children away from their family. They have this, like, huge little DCFS little thing and everything like that, and they just basically take lives. And since 2005, there has been an estimated 33,000 um, people who have died from just overdosing of drugs. You know, they use needles, you sniff and stuff, you, you lose a needle, you smoking after other people. You know, you don't know what they have. You don't know if they even know they have HIV or hepatitis or whatever like that. You know, it's already bad enough. You can catch a HPV from just rubbing on uh, skin contact, but you putting somebody else's blood, that needle that they using in you, that, that's, that's a sure win for whatever they get because the blood that you take in from that person, whatever they get, you can get it too. Drugs, they lead you into unemployment. If you have a good job, they, they, they take you away from your family, basically. You know, you're not able to do everything that you thought you were able to do. And um, drugs, they have led to um, a lot of the criminal backgrounds and a lot of the criminal violence and everything like that that has been happening in the world since like the 1950s because that's when the epidemic actually really started from the heroin epidemic to to crack wave um um actually i i did actually uh, i understand where genesis is coming from on a part where you know Drugs does deteriorate your body and it does um, cause you to lose your job and it does, you know, uh, make your personality a bit rough also and it does take you away from your family. When you, when you in your right mind, it takes away your personality. It takes away from you, period. All the things that you like to do, that you thought you liked to do as you were a child or whatever like that, it stops you from doing that because now you high and you so strung out and just completely blown out that you just sitting there stuck and can't really do nothing else. You don't have an appetite when you do drugs. I mean, I done seen a lot of people that actually sit there and do drugs and got kids sit there with them and they don't feed their kids because they think their kids not hungry because they not hungry mainly putting it out there like, you know, drugs is bad for you, drugs is that. Okay, what about the people that have that have been arrested? Like if your your mom or your dad could have been arrested, so they can't get no job. So how they gonna provide for you? They gonna kill and rob, you know what I'm saying? What about the people who who actually don't have a choice in whether or not they use drugs and they just actually are just put into that environment and actually, you know, just put into that circumstance and now they just strung out and they don't have nothing else to do and now they out here fiending and stuff for all these drugs and whatnot like that. What about those people?